We are in game number one, everyone. Welcome. The first game of the series, Hero vs. Jordan, this play of three. It's going to be Jordan's fourth series, if I'm not mistaken. I think he still has to play one more set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure actually he does have to play one more set, so. This is Jordan's fourth series. I'm not sure this is Hera's third or fourth. I'm gonna take a look at the standings and all the points for this group after the series. Hey Noah! I thought uh, AM guys spies arena, am I wrong? I don't think you'll be entirely wrong, however, there is also the fact that Hera random into arena, so I'm not really sure what that was about. I don't know if that he, he meant to random or not. Hyrule always wins by the way, it says Hera and Jordan just laughs it out. He brings a villager and pushes Hera away. So yeah, Acropolis for game number one and it seems like we are about to, to catch up, right? To be completely live. What I can see. Yeah. Hey B, welcome. How are the new projects going? You said in 2023 you will be applying a lot of the things that you have learned in 2022. Yeah, well, up until this point, I haven't been able to apply quite as many things as I would have liked to because I got a, I said this on stream the other day, I got a part-time job outside streaming, right? So I can say now that I work two jobs. <laughs> so that has left me with less time than I had before, right? But yesterday... As a matter of fact, my lord, we never ever catch up, right? I'm just going to go 1x because we're in the field age already. But yeah, yesterday, I actually spent a good chunk of my day trying to reorganize my daily routine, my schedule, so that I would have time to hopefully do more of the things that I wanted to do. So, we're going to see how that changes things uh, during February, but January was was pretty hard in terms of working time. What do you do, or you prefer to keep it personal, Uncle? <laughs> uh, well, I am a an assistant producer for Capturage, and I am doing that part time. They were looking for people, and I said, "Well, this is something." You know, I I've, I've never been the one to look for, you know, standard like actual jobs. I've always been the one to try and. Kind of opened the way for myself in a sense but when i saw that opportunity i said you know what this is actually something that i that i wouldn't really mind it it's not something that uh i would say ah oh, uh gotta go to to work right so i applied was fortunate enough to get it and i've been doing that but yeah it's of course added some workload and yesterday I tried to reorganize my, my routine to hopefully have some time back. And and yeah, hopefully that's going to be enough for me to start doing more of the things that I wanted to do. Speaking of schedule, I have a problem with time management and such. Do you have tricks for that you can share? Balance between work, personal life and in between. Oh yeah, absolutely. But we can talk about that in between the series if you want, because right now we see a scout go down from Hera and one go down to extremely low HP from the three that he's got remaining. So far he's not really been able to get too much damage done. He's gonna try and fish some weak villagers, but there is nothing of the sort around Jordan's CC. And if we take a look up in the north, around the wood line, not only is Jordan completely walled off, but he's got a, a spearman over there outside the walls, just in case. Hera's going to show up with the scouts over there. Jordan's going to be already prepared, right? And the red player, on the other hand, doesn't really have too many units to work with. And this is not the unit control that's going to allow him to do anything with the units that he does have. Three spearmen. Three scouts right now for Jordan. Versus seven scouts from Hera, four of which are forward and once again. Maybe not the best unit control over there for Jordan. The Spearmen have been going down for the most part. Without really getting too much damage done. And now he's trying to fight with the villagers. That was the right call. If he had just tried to run away, the scouts would have taken the villager down. So now she's weak, but she survives. 
and the spearmen are here. Yeah, yeah, uh, just try to remind me after this series and I can share some information uh, some information with you and hopefully it's going to be of help. There are still a few things that I feel like I can maybe optimize, but I am pretty happy with the way that I have set up my own time management, personally. One village goes down from here! It's gonna be first Eco Blood! Journalists want to get it, and here is trying, man. He's trying for dear life to get some damage done around Jordan. Jordan's just been defending himself way too well. He's got a stronger economy right now, and if this is any indication, Jordan's gonna be the first player to go up to the Castle Age or to be able to click out to the Castle Age. And Hera, Hera spent a lot of resources on scouts, and he is trying to gauge. Jordan's resource investment into the fuel age units, right? Because if he doesn't really go for too many things and Hera realizes Jordan's just trying to play for the castle age, this could be a perfect opportunity for Hera to go full in to scouts himself. And he's going for it. He's going for it. He was already going for forging. Now he's got scaled by the number and Blawlins is coming up. Meanwhile, Jordan's about to click out to the castle age and Hera knows exactly what's up. He's played this game too many times. He knows what the time it is for players to click out to the Castle Age after going for a few scouts. And he knows that Jordan's got to be going for it right now. So this is the perfect opportunity for Jordan, for Hera rather, to invest heavily into scouts. And I would probably expect him to be on more than one stable right now. But he's only on one, which I do find surprising. Usually what you see Hera do is he waits for his opponents to click out to the Castle Age. And then he uses two or triple stables scout production to overwhelm his opponents so that by the time they get to the castle age they have no economy to work with right now though we see two villagers go down from jordan but this is barely going to scratch the surface right uh jordan was the first player to get villagers down from Hera, and now it's going to be three to one in favor of the canadian but because jordan already began with extra villagers because of the civilization bonus it seems to me like Hera's done quite enough damage yet especially after getting some idle tc time himself but yeah this is in any case going to equalize the work account between both these players Here we go. Seems like Hera's getting pushed away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. And Jordan. Jordan's about to get to the castle each. He's got him bloodlines himself. He's got horse collar on the way. He gets to the castle each now. Are we going to see knights or camels right away? Hera's playing with the Khmer, so he does not get access to camels. And Jordan. Will definitely counter whatever Hera could go for by going for camels over here. Now, Hera's trying to be sneaky with the tower. This one does not have enough range to deny the goal. But once he gets Barking Arrow, he's going to have enough range to deny at the very least one tile. However, here comes Jordan with the camels, with the spearmen. Pushing Hera away. And the bull play right now is just getting... Swept away, right, from Jordan's base by the Spearman. He's just waiting, of course, until he gets to the Castle Age so that he can go for Chain Bar of the Armor. He can go for Light Cavalry. He's got Husbandry on the way right now. Given the amount of units he's got at this point in time, it certainly does make sense for him to try and go for that. Now, check this out. Tower comes up, and we see Monasteries on the way coming in from Hera. He tried to go for a sneak with three villagers. He was going for two monasteries at a time, and well, here is here with a bunch of light cavalry. We have Jordan's camels, but there's the tower over there. What's going to work better? I think the tower and the scouts are coming out on top. The numbers are just too great from Hera for Jordan's army to be effective enough over here, right? And it is going to be the case indeed that Hera comes out on top. Now, how are Jordan's scout the defender's advantage? 
if he keeps on roaming around or if he keeps on going for more and more camels, it's just the natural thing for Jordan to eventually clean up Hera's units. And I'm not just talking about Light Cavalry, but of course about the villagers too. And Hera's done a really good job garrisoning the villagers, finishing the monastery, garrisoning the villagers again. And now Jordan's finally cleaning Hera up. One monastery has already come up. What does Hera need to do over here? He needs to finish the second monastery so that his production is going to be what he was anticipating. And Jordan not only does need to prevent the second monastery from coming up, but he needs to take the tower down and the first monastery down as well. The tower is going to be high priority so that he can take the villagers down. And he's got some scouts over here. Scout cavalry. Not like cavalry, just standard scouts. Going after the tower, so that he's got something at hand to take on the monks when they do eventually pop out. And we have the first monk coming out over here. It's going to come out from Hera, but Jordan is trying to take the tower down, and Hera cannot do anything because of the scouts. Yeah, and you know what? The tower, it's got less than half HP already, so what Jordan's been doing, he's got to keep on going for Yeah, notice. And Jordan's just trying to stick around the monastery. He's just trying to hold on to the scout so that he can hopefully get the monk down. And the play is going to be good though. Hera gets away with a conversion. That was really well played. If you took a look, Hera actually sent one of the villagers to get a quick wall up. So that the monk was going to be protected. The monk was still kind of exposed from the left hand side. But the conversion connected over here anyway. And Hera. Hera is still getting away with a lot more damage than what's due. That was really well played from Mr. Hera for sure. Yeah, now you know what? Jordan. In a world of pain. Beautiful. Another conversion coming in for Hera as well. Now that he's got two monasteries. It's finding a position to overwhelm Jordan. Yeah, and we see some extra villagers going down. Hera's going out to five. To one KD. Hera is that? Real common. So far, Hera's looking fantastic. He's managed to get ahead by a lot. Compared to Jordan. Take a look at the idle TC time over there. Jordan is really struggling to defend himself. Now he's going to be forced into another barracks. But he doesn't want to keep on trying. He number one doesn't that go in favor of the Canadian. Jordan. He looked really, really good for a little moment over there. But the play from earlier was so good from Hera. That I just want to go back and watch it one more time. And it was around here, right? As the monk... Yeah, the monk was going to come out, I believe. Let's take a look. Yeah, around here. Check this out. This was absolutely magnificent. He goes for the quick walls with a villager to protect the, the monk, right? And he's able to do so. The monk gets the conversion. And from this point onwards, he's able to take the engagement, push. Jordan's defense is back. And uh, take the game from there. Well played. Well done. Going through the achievements then. We'll find a better KD for Hera. Better than 4 to 3. We'll find a better eco score over here for Hera as well. Doing a really good job. And then on top of that for society. We're going to see a stronger villager max count for Hera. We're going to see a lower amount of losses 
for Hera in terms of villages as well. And overall, the game was looking very good for the Canadian. Game number two is going to come up in a moment. But for now, let's go back and cross the civilizations and the map out. And welcome everyone to game number two, Hera versus Jordan with Italians and Byzantines and Scandinavia. Hera is going to have with his civilization 15% cheaper fish and ships, a 15% discount to go up to the next stage. He'll get with this civilization a 20% discount on gunpowder units in addition to 33% cheaper dock and university upgrades while for the team bonus. Our civilization is going to give him access to Condottieri from the barracks in the Imperial Age. Notice, I believe he's stealing these cheap from inside Jordan's half of the map, if I'm mistaken, we'll, we'll see. And Jordan, on the other hand, well, uh, I think it's gonna be fine, right? There are extra sheep over here. Well, he's going to find these, and he's gonna be fine. So anyway, Jordan civilization, on the other hand, the uh, Byzantines will give him 10, 20, 30, 40% extra HP, right? Buildings, depending on the age, in addition to 25% cheaper skirm spear and the camel rider units. Besides that, the Byzantines also get free town watch, free town patrol. We're gonna have. Besides all that for the Byzantines, 25% faster attacking fireline units. And a 33% discount to go up to the Imperial Age. Now for the team bonus. Byzantines will have also monks who can heal units 100% faster, and that's going to be about it. So, all these guys will have very fitting civilizations for a map like this. And you gotta wonder, right, what is each player going to do about it? Is Hera... Going to be the one to go for, try to be sneaky. He does get a discount to go up to the castle, to the field age, to the castle age, to the imperial age, right? So, should be good. And while Jordan... Yeah, Jordan on the other hand, let's get a faster attack in. Fireline units. It's gonna be the first player to go for a dock, by the way. Yeah, but the looks of it, Jordan, Jordan took a little bit of damage from the TC. But he's fine, and he's going to continue roaming around and scouting Hera's base. Hera, on the other hand, was trying to get a... Yeah, he was trying to get a... A little bit of scouting done, right? Around Jordan's side of the map, around Jordan's side of the river. He doesn't know where Jordan is, necessarily, but he can see a secondary gold over here. However, because the relic is there, uh, chances of Jordan being around here are... Non-existent. And Hera is going to continue scouting towards the left-hand side. Anyway, we have talked about the civilizations. We're going to talk about the map generation in a moment, but I just want to take a look at Hera to see if he does spot the dock. He should be able to. And if he was paying attention to the scout, then oh, he should have seen the scout go past the rubble. But if he was not paying attention, then he's not going to know where it is. But he's sitting in a village already, and I think he knows, I think he knows, I think he might have realized about the rivals over there. Hello, this game is coming to Game Pass. I am an Xbox player, tell me about it. Yes, this game is coming to Xbox Game Pass tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a fantastic game. I would be surprised if you haven't heard about the Jump Empire 2 in the past. But if you haven't, well, it's a fantastic RTS game. Real-time strategy. All about history and medieval warfare. So, each player is going to begin. Usually, it depends on what it is that you want to do with the game. You have a lot of different game modes. You have campaigns. So, a lot of single player opportunities. And you have a lot of campaigns. There's like easily over 100 hours of gameplay if you're just doing single player. But, what we are seeing right now is multiplayer competitive Age of Empires, right? And it's going to be a beautiful game for that. Each player is going to begin with three villagers, one scout, one TC, 200 wood, 200 food, 50 gold, uh, and 100, 100 gold, uh, sorry, and 200 stone. And from that point onwards, it's going to be up to each player to grow their economies, build an army, 
go full art and try to take their opponent down while surviving themselves. And it's just a thrill. It's fantastic. It's been on the rise actually for the last couple of years. And now with the Xbox release, console players will also be able to join in on the fan as uh, on the fan as they're going to introduce controller controller specific optimizations, right? Hey Wonder Boy! Hi hi. But yeah, it's pretty good. Even just for the campaigns, I would say it's totally worth it. But uh, if you do enjoy building your base and taking the AI down, you might want to give multiplayer a shot. There are several modes for multiplayer as well. You don't need to play competitively necessarily. There's stuff like CBA, which is highly automatized. You just decide which units you want to, to produce and then you're going to get them for free. There is Battle Royale. There's Empire Wars. And there are several several maps where you're not really going to be as encouraged to be aggressive as some of the other maps. And a map like this, yeah, aggression is definitely going to be kind of a requirement, right? But there are communities around maps like Black Forest where you do have a lot of time to build your economy first before fighting. Can you show me what I can do? I cannot do that. We are casting a tournament right now. But uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to find plenty of content around YouTube or some of the more casual streamers doing gameplay. They can do that for sure. But we are right now casting a tournament, an s tier tournament, T90 Titans League. And we're going to be doing that throughout the whole stream. Salve. But yeah, it's... It's pretty good, and I'm absolutely certain you're going to find content pretty easily. Nice shot, though. Then we shot coming from Hera. Yeah, and he got away with the sneaky duck, so now all these players will be fighting over control of the North River. Down the south, it's going to be Jordan to want to go for a sneaky duck, and I don't think Hera will realize about this. Yeah, he does not really have vision of it. There we go. Nice. Pokemon Fire, if you would like to know some of the things that you can do, I cannot show you, but I can tell you. So you can look for Black Forest, Age of Empires 2, uh, Black Forest Games or Black Forest Tournaments, and you can see what that looks like. Black Forest is the map that I was talking about that's going to give you a lot of time to build your economy first before fighting. If you want to see what aggression looks like, you can take a look at something like Master of Socotra on YouTube as well. You're going to see what aggressive games are like. And if you want to see single player, you can take a look at the gameplay, you know, the playthrough gameplay videos from... I would, I would actually recommend you not to take a look at the pro players playthrough of the campaigns because that's not realistic. That is not what like average player gameplay looks like. So I'll probably recommend you to to look for gameplay videos from smaller channels, perhaps, on YouTube. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you're you're going to find something to enjoy within Age of Empires. Showing the tech tree? I cannot do that. We don't have uh, the tech tree on a cartridge. Anyway. I think might have been gone already. <laughs> Game so far is favoring Jordan, as Hera does not really have too many navy units anymore. The militia raft is probably going to go after the fish ship. Not quite, and he does not have enough HP to do much of anything, so Hera, most likely not will not getting cleaned up on the left hand side, meanwhile on the right hand side. We have the two dogs from Hera. Second dog coming in for Jordan. Jordan's gonna try. Catch up to Hera's production potential, right? And this could be really good. Me want to land. We don't have too much to speak up from Hera. He's brought a villager over. Yeah, but she won't really be able to, to keep the dog cap whatsoever. And she's going down! I think she is! Yes, sir! She's just gone down. can see her over there still. 
a little bit. Here on the other hand, kind of gives up on water in hopes of going out to the castle age earlier instead. It's going to be there. This should give Hera a little bit of a rougher time on water and this should give Jordan the opportunity to claim water. But in the end, it seems like Hera's unit control is too good. At the very least in the Southeast River. And it's a little bit of a struggle for Jordan. He still does have more units, right? It was technically 4 versus 3, although this one is going down. And we have the militia raft from here as well. Jordan. Jordan needs to go for the demos and he's going for them! That is a good shot. From Hera. Jordan's got some demolition raft coming out, but this is not good in control. And once again, Hera does end up surrounding. Jordan's units for the most part, and the player with the lower amount of units is the player who's going to end up coming out on top as Jordan's been unable to make the forward work. Here we win this. It's certainly looking very much like it. As he's got to be the first player again for the castle age. He is on a higher amount of navy units on the right hand side. And well, on the left hand side, he ended up getting cleaned up over here. It does not matter. He's the first player to go up to the castle age, right? He's going for double monastery. Again, the same strat we saw from game number one. Hera's going to go for in game number two. He's got a good civilization for this. The only thing that Italians won't get from the monastery is uh, heresy. Their finales, I'm pretty sure they do get. Yeah, and Jordan's trying to... To overpower Hera, right? But Hera's getting the war galley upgrade now. So these are fire ships. Versus fire galleys. Here's just going to need a few extra units to completely secure. There's water control on the right hand side. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, he does have the monks already on the way from both these monasteries. And by the way, welcome, welcome back, Hello, Didact. Hope you had a great weekend. Beautiful. That was not good for Hera. That was definitely wasted. Units over there. He doesn't now get into conversions though. What is next? Tower? Seems like he's gonna try and chop through. Oh, it is going to be open, right? If he chops through there. Take a look at this. Yeah. Wow, that is so good from Hera. That is such a big brain play. And he's just been going for fantasy play after fantasy play. Now we have four monks over here versus five villagers. That's definitely not something that Jordan's gonna want to, to see, right? So he's just going to pull the villagers off. That, that was really well played. Now here come the monks. We see three four conversions coming up and he's going to get away with two at the very least. Three four conversions, everything connects. And Jordan, Jordan is bringing additional villagers to fight over, but it's going to be six villagers from Hera versus six villagers from Jordan. Jordan just trying to get Hera to idle his villagers for as much as possible. And this is actually resulting in a lot of damage. As Hera's economy is not going to be anywhere near as good. You can take a look at the worker economy last in the last minute. The worker efficiency actually is going to drop under 50%. While Hera, Hera is, on the other hand, getting the fate back with these monks. Yeah, and he's good for four additional conversions, right? He's gonna try to go for it and notice how... He's trying to convert with the monks that are being targeted. He's trying to keep the monks alive with the monks that are not converting right now. And that's going to result in pretty much guaranteed conversions, right? The monks are still pretty much alive over here for sure. And this is just so well played. A man is coming out right now for Hera as well. And Jordan doesn't know losing a villager. That's going to be the third villager he's lost or the third worker that he's lost.
As fish chips have also gone down. And now here is going for a TC. And you gotta be kidding me. There is no way that Hera has actually gotten away with this. And the gameplay level we are seeing right now is just off the charts. I don't think I have seen this many big brain plays in a single game in a while. Yeah, and here is the one to deliver. But Jordan, on the other hand, Jordan's struggling big time. He's going for a scout, so he's going to start taking the monks down, which is good. But one of the monks do does or does end up giving the conversion and. He's got a bunch of extra villagers over here. Most of these are converted villagers, so his worker lead is much higher than what you would believe, right? Over 30 extra workers, and very soon it's gonna be on over twice the eco count if he doesn't get in some extra conversions over here. And yeah, Hero's gonna be on his way to the Imperial Age very soon. This has just been. This has just been such a such an out-of-the-box game, such an interesting one. Yeah, and the quick wall's coming in from here as well. He's paying attention back home and he's getting the conversions and Jordan's done. Jordan is done. He does not want to know anything about playing the Canadian anymore. He's going to call the GG and hand the series over to Hera. However, we still have a third game to go for though and that's not going to be optional. Jordan is going to have one opportunity to, at the very least, get a point over here in the series. But Hera has already taken the series and from this point onwards, it's going to be for the points, of course. How tilted can you be? Yes. Absolutely tilting doesn't play from Hera. It's... It's just mesmerizing to watch, but it's got to be so frustrating to play against, I do agree. Better KV for Jordan? Yes, sir. About 6 to 5. For the economy? A stronger economy for a Hera by a lot, actually. Collecting about 4,000, close to 4,000 extra resources. A higher villager max count for Hera of close to 30 extra workers compared to Jordan at the end of the game. Jordan went down to 25 workers while Hera was up at 65 workers. And it was not going to be the end of it, of course. It was going to continue getting more and more one-sided in favor of Hera. So well done. Let's go back. And here we are, guys, in game number three. Welcome, everyone. So the final game of the series, Hera is playing with the Poles, Jordan's playing with Bohemians. We're gonna see, uh, indeed, a matchup. One of the matchups that we were expecting, the other option was going to be Bohemians versus Poles. But Hera's gonna try to play for numbers over here. It's worked out pretty well so far in the first two games. It's gonna try and make it work in game number three as well. However, I do not think, though, that we are going to have a double monastery full monk push to summon around from Hera. However, if he does go for it, Oh, uh, well, that's going to be interesting to watch, and I, I don't think Jordan would be too happy to have to face that one more time, but we'll see. Regardless, taking a look at the civilizations, taking a look at the bonuses, starting with Hera civilization first, he's playing with the poles, which means he's going to have 5, 10, 15 and 20 HP regeneration on villagers per minute, depending on the age. In addition to access to Fallburg, the Pulse will also have 33% uh, gold access from Stone. And for the team bonus, you can see for the Pulse that Scoutland units get one bonus damage against Archer type units. Taking a look at Jordan's civilization, on the other hand, by the way, uh, the team bonus for Hera, I did not say it's kind of like the Persian. But a weak one, and just for scouts, right? But yeah, taking a look at Jordan Civilization on the other hand, we're gonna see that the Bohemians they do get a myriad of bonuses, actually, significantly more bonuses compared to the Poles. Starting with free mining camp upgrades. We're gonna have an addition to that for the Bohemians. Hold on. We're gonna have an addition to that for the Bohemians. Fervor and sanctity affecting villagers. From the monasteries, right? Uh, the technologies from the monastery affect the villagers. So that's going to make the villagers faster. It's going to make the villagers tankier. And then on top of that, 
we have for the Bohemians also 25% higher bonus damage from spear line units. We're gonna get access to chemistry and hand cannon here in the castle age for them. And the 100 would discount on blacksmiths and universities. Well, for the team bonus, they will get 80% faster working markets. Here it looks in this respectful fantasy plays mood, so I part wonder if he's going to go uh, for the tower rush. Ah, oh, that's a good point. We'll we'll take a look at that. By the time we are done talking about the map generation, the play the players are going to be already in a position to go for that if they were hoping to do so. What can polls do? Unique units. Well, I would imagine probably the best chance for them would be to go for the stack the privilege full mood uh, full full um, flood, right? And Viva La Rob, thank you so much for the gift to sub. That's going to be the third gift to sub in the channel. So very much appreciated. And the sub's going over to Magnum Mood. Who's going to get the subscription, the sixth subscription to the channel so far. And thanks so much for the support. Viva La Rob, it's very much appreciated. And, uh, yeah. Taking a look at the map generation. Starting with the blue player first. Gonna have the main gold towards the left, right? This one is kind of close to the TC, but it's also kind of close to the walls. I think a scout in the castle each might actually get vision of this inside the walls when scouting from alongside the walls, but I don't think the fuel age is going to be possible, and uh, as such, I don't think it's actually going to be a thing. I don't think the scout's going to realize about it at all. Secondary goal is going to be towards the south for Hera. He's got the main stone on the back. And then we have also the secondary stone, the remaining secondary stone, and the remaining secondary gold on the left hand side forward. We're taking a look at the map generation for Jordan. We'll see that the red player has the main goal towards the south, kind of close to the walls. And once again, this is close enough that I think a scout might actually get vision of this. But you know what, though? You know what? And Flower Dancer, thanks so much for the sub as well. Dude, the hype train close, the, the, the hype train is closed, it says. Over here, one more sub and it's going to trigger. Thanks so much for the support, it's very much appreciated. 28 months in a row, it's two years and four months already. And thank you so much for the sustain, for the sustained support, Flower and Dancer. But yeah, um, we have the main goal towards the south, right? And then the secondary goal is going to be up in the north. Now, one thing that I was going to say is, unlike Hera's gold, the gold from Jordan actually does have one extra tile over here, a little bit closer to the walls that you can see. And this makes a big difference because the scout from Hera in the fuel age, if he ends up scouting alongside the wall like this, from the fuel age already, he's going to get vision of this gold. Because secondary resources, the remaining ones are going to be outside the walls for the red player, right? Uh, this could potentially influence Hera's decision as to where to locate a castle. If he were to go for a forward castle and to stack the privileges or something like that, and going for a castle over here when he's got vision of this gold, would allow him to deny three resources with a single fortification. Actually, you can say four if you take into account the neutral uh, stone, right? Finally, Jordan does have his main stone on the back, of course, so that's good. But this is looking better for Hera, in my opinion. I think the map generation is just a little bit rough for Jordan, just because of this extra tile, right? That is that little bit closer to the walls that it could potentially get spotted. Now, if you take a look at Hera, Hera was already scouting alongside the walls earlier, or close to it. But, of course, in the Dark Age, the scout does not have enough line of sight. Now, in the Fuel Age, the scout's going to get... To extra line of sight, so that's going to give him the vision that he needs to actually spot this from outside the walls. But he's got a scout over there. And we'll see. Well, these players are going out to the castle age very soon. Jordan's going to be the first one to click up. He's got the market already coming up. Hero's going to be 25 seconds later to it. Interestingly enough, he's not collecting any stones. So we are not expecting to see Hera go for any weird shenanigans. Probably just going to be economy for Hera. And then just try to make use of Slack the Privileges once he gets to the Imperial Age, I would say. Late Castle, 
early Imperial Age stage. And indeed, it is going to be a 30 second lead, a 25 second lead, sorry, for Jordan. Both these players are going up very, very close to each other. Hero's going to go for full economy. He's got the resources to go for two TCs, right? So, well, not right away. He's going for farms right now, but he's got the stone. He's going to have the wood in a moment. And I am expecting to see one TC probably around here. The other TC, I would expect to see probably around here. Left hand side. We have, for the red player, he could potentially go for his own TCs. Probably around the goal over here. It's not necessary in the sense that he it's going to be on the back, right? So he doesn't need protection. Mm. And then the other one over here, maybe? By the, by the stone, perhaps around here, so that he can surround it with farms eventually. Yeah, I think something like this would probably make sense, right? For the time being, Jordan's going to prioritize the monastery. Hera is getting to the castle age himself. Oh, he went for the stables. He's going for scouts. And he's got a monastery coming up himself. Yes, does not have enough resources to go for the extra TCs just yet. But I'm pretty sure he's going to go for it. I'm pretty sure both players are going to go for it. Okay, well, Jordan's going for the second TC next to the wood, to the south of the gold. Let's take a look at Hera now. Yeah, now he's going to have enough vision to see well within the walls. He knows about the monk already, so he's going to keep the scouts around, around the right-hand side. He's trying to go after the monk, and he won't really be able to do much of anything. And it'll be probably better for Hera to just keep the majority of the scouts over here. Maybe send the weak one around, just to get more vision, right? Down the south, for instance, we still have the relic over here. Although he's going to go for it. Let's see if Jordan's got vision of all the relics. He does! He does! And he will see this one disappear in a moment, and he does! But if Jordan is not paying attention to the minimap, then he's not going to know any better. And now he's going towards the south. He realized the relic is missing, so he's going after the monk. But he's not going to be able to find it. The monk has already come in from Hera. Yes, sir. Absolutely fantastic. And the extra monks are coming up to the north from Hera as well. He's going to try and collect two relics at the same time. And Jordan, Jordan's just trying to keep an eye. On the left hand side with some scouts. And we see the conversion coming up over here with two monks. He might be able to get away with it. And he does get it. And Hera's conversions this series have been through the roof. He's managed to get everything he's tried to go for. And Jordan, Jordan has just been the victim. He's been taking the most losses to monks that I have seen in TTL for the most part. And uh, Hera, Hera's been the one. Exerting faith over Jordan, right? So that's going to be in the end. It would seem four to one relic distribution as Hera kind of gives up on trying to take the monk down over there. He probably would have been able to do it, but he probably would have lost a, a lot of HP or many, if not all, of the scouts trying to get uh, to get the monk down, right? So. In the end, it is going to be 4 to 1. Jordan is not even coming out anymore. Okay, there we go. He's going to try to go for the relic up in the north. It's coming in a little bit too late. As uh, Hera's already going to grab it. Yeah, and the Spearman, of course, they do not really have the speed necessary for him to go and try and intercept the monk. So Hera's getting away with it. Anyway, it is a good opportunity now for Hera to make use of the scouts that he's gotten. 
and try to get some scouting information. Something that I didn't really talk about is the possibility of scouting with monks too, but players oftentimes just go and send the monks back home. But let's say you are in Jordan's position where the gold generation from Hera is not going to be close enough for you to spot it with scouts alone. If you brought a monk over, the monk would actually certainly give you enough vision to spot the gold over there, right? But players, for the most part, are not going to really try and get the scout going. Although it seems like Hera is going to try to do it now, though. I talk about the one potential good play the players usually never go for, and now Hera is going to be the one to go for it. It's got enough map control over here to give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. He sees the monks from Jordan. Sees the archer ranges coming out from Jordan, so he's expecting to see hand cannoneer. And Jordan is going to oblige. He is going for chemistry. Besides that, he is getting vision of the gold as well. And this is fantastic. If Hera starts collecting stone, decides to go for a four castle well, then he'll know exactly where to drop it. Yeah, here is using the monks as mobile outpost right now. Not very mobile, apparently, but yeah, he is already very much aware of what Jordan is going for. Chemistry is here. Monk is slow, it will be spotted and kill. In the army with it? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely do, and uh, we have seen oftentimes in the past players just send the monks back home and never really use them for much of anything, even if they have army, but Hera is going to be the exception here. He's the first player I have seen in a while to actually make use of the monks extra line aside. To try and get some information, Jordan. Jordan went for a tournament just to push Hera away from here. And here come the hand cannon here, Hera. Here instead will be on his way to the Imperial Age. He's just waiting for the buildings, trying to rush. A university. He's got it. The Imperial Age is on the way for the Canadian. Well, Jordan. Jordan's going for a siege workshop. So yeah, he's going to try to go for as heavy a push as possible in the Castle Age. And this is maybe going to reminisce mm, an Imperial Age push, right? But... In the castle edge, of course, because of the hand cannon here. So is he going for a siege tower? Yes, he's going for a siege tower. This is something that we saw Jordan do already in the past. As a matter of fact, today... The video got published on my YouTube channel uh, about this very strategy that Jordan's gone for. The last time around that we saw him go for this. The difference, however, is that... When he does get the Siege Tower out, usually he's got villagers out already. And he's going to have enough stone to go for a castle. So he can hop over the walls with villagers and get a castle in into the economy right away, right? Love to see the Siege Tower becoming made up, but of course... We'll see. Nice conversions coming in from Jordan though, and he's got a hand cannon here inside already. And he's starting to collect stone. He might be able to go for a castle eventually, but I don't think this is a good position for Jordan still. Hera, he is going up to the Imperial Age significantly earlier and has fallen behind just by two workers. Here come the scouts from here. He's getting one. He's getting two. He's getting three. He's getting four monks. I see those as two scouts. That's definitely going to be worth it. But the rule player. Now the Imperial Age is here. Hero's going for chemistry himself. He's got some crossbows. So he's going to try and make a play for our ballisters. Against Hand Cannoneer, even crossbows in the Imperial Age are going to dominate once he gets Bracer and, uh, and Chemistry, right? Yeah, and he's doing it. He's taking the Hand Cannoneer down. Nothing for Jordan to do anymore. Here we are.
down. And just being able to stabilize. In the next 10 seconds is gonna get access to chemistry while Jordan got enough stone to go for a castle and he went for a defensive castle in the location he needed to prevent Hera from going for a forecastle that would have denied these resources from Jordan. So that is a very good location for the red player to get a defensive castle up. Oh, little hiccup over there, network hiccup, what it looks with, but here it's here for Jordan and Hera. Hera doesn't seem to be interested for, doesn't seem to be interested in Schlachter Privilege so. Although he is collecting stone quite heavily right now, that is something that I would have expected him to try and prioritize earlier, so that he would have a castle already by the time he got to the Privilege, but no. It's not from Jordan. He will not lose in the light cavalry though. He's got Nietzsche coming up. Squires! So we'll see Pikeman coming in next. And he does have the Pikeman upgrade coming up. So Squires, it's going to be Halvdir and Hunitza, the surefire army composition for Jordan. We have seen so many times. Work extremely well for the Bohemians, while Hera on the other hand, well, Hera... Hera's gonna have to make a play for what? Tarpa Lister's? Against the Hunitsa is extremely risky. He's playing Pulse over here, if he does not go for Arbor Lister's, he's going to have only Cavalier as an option. Or Obuch and the Obuch, they will not work against... Hand Cannoneer, I'll tell you. And... The Cavalier, of course, can get... Countered by the Halvadir that Jordan is already planning to get into. So the army composition that Jordan could go for over here, Hand Karnir, Havadir, and Hunitsa, is going to pretty much deny anything that Hera could ever go for, right? The horrible esters. Although with Hera's unit control, I, I wouldn't really rule him out of this game, but it's going to be tough for sure. It's going to require Hera to pull the absolute best unit control he can go for. Jordan. Jordan's gonna need to go for it so himself so we'll see We go. Stables coming up for Hera. He's going for chain Barden armor. Extra stables on the way. Castle's coming up. Siege workshop's coming up. He's got Wind Hazard already. And Jordan's got a Hobbit upgrade already. He's going for chain mail armor. Extra stables on the way for Hera's will in uh, abundance. Hera's production potential is going to be through the roof as well. Notice he's going for Lahitic Legacy, so he will try and make the Hazar work as the Mitchell over here, even against Halbadir. And uh, with Lahitic Legacy, these guys are going to get trample damage. You take a look, and they have. They should have an uh, area of effect range, right? Of uh, 0.5 tiles. Oh, the shots! From Jordan, taking the bar cannon down from Hera. Well done. Conscription is coming in for the Canadian. He's got Iron Casting coming out. He's going for all the upgrades before taking the engagement. While well, Jordan, of course, is going for. Locking arrow right now. Just going to make the castles significantly stronger. And protecting these units from behind. And I probably would have liked, yeah, to see a 
few more hand cannoneers still alive from Jordan in case Hera was ever hoping to make a play for Obuch, right? Which would on paper counter this, but we have no Obuch coming out from Hera whatsoever. Instead, we have block printing coming up. Iron Castle is about to finish research. I'm pretty sure it's going to go for Blast Furnace afterwards. And here he comes with the... Oh, the shot! So, completely missed that one. That was really good from Hera. He took three Pugnitsu down with a single shot. And now he's bringing the light cavalry. Actually, the Wing Nazar, I should say, as the Pugnitsu are going down to the Armour Lesters. We have no Pugnitsu left for Jordan anymore. And Hera, Hera has gotten an incredible nasty... Nasty trade so far. Getting so many who need to down for such a cheap cost, right? He's going to the population once again. Sure, he's lost a bunch of Wing Tazar, but he doesn't really care about that. Wing Tazar are going to be just a, a meat shield. Hey, we see the Bombard Cannons over here. Taking on the Harvadier as well, yes. Again, Hera's unit control has been just incredible. So far, he's managed to get so many who need to down. He's managed to pay the Harvadier round for the Arbalester to take down. It will still have significantly more Bombard Cannons for Hera compared to Jordan's Zunita. And while the Red player is going to continue trying to go for it. Hera's unit control has been absolutely insane. And it's what's allowing him to get a better trade over here against an army composition that, quite frankly, should have taken Hera down a while ago. But the unit control for the Wu player, just the sheer gameplay level over here from the Canadian, is nothing short of incredible. Now, he does end up losing a lot of the Arbalesters, right? So the Halberdier will still stay alive. But all he cares about is taking the. Pugnitsu down. He's been able to get one more down. The other two are very low HP. One is gonna be left only for Jordan. He's got three total. Not really sure where the other two are. It seems like they are coming forward. But Hera, if you can continue like this, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be pricey, especially in the food department. But if you can continue like this, he should find himself in a winning position for sure. And that's another Pugnitsu. Taking a lot of damage over there. Me high. Thank you so much for the raids. Very much appreciated. I hope you had a great stream. And everybody coming from your stream, I hope you had a good time so far, guys. We are casting Jordan versus Hera. And you would not believe your eyes taking a look at Hera's gameplay in games 1 and 2. So much so that if you have not seen those games, I would highly encourage you to go back and check those out. Because it's been incredible to see the Canadian in action. And it seems like game number three is going to be no exception. We have the Bombard Cannons taking on the castle. The Hovnitsa zoned by the Wing the Tsar. As they are finally moving forward, it's time for Hera to be careful with his own Bombard Cannons. But he's not even going to respect the Hovnitsa. He's not going back whatsoever. He's going to take the castle down and he does. Only one castle left for Jordan as Hera continues laying the red player's units. Humnita after Humnita have just gone down and Jordan cannot keep on going anymore. Hera will take game number three and will as such get a clean sweep against the German player. And it has been out worldish to see Hera's gameplay this series. It's quite frankly like, very, very similar to watching the Viper play a couple of years ago when he was just so dominating. Hera played this game with a commanding lead, similar to, to only what we saw from the snake not that long ago, right? Let me let me take a look at around here. I think this is about the time we saw the bombard cannons. Yeah, check this out. Check this out. Check that out. Bow! Three who needs down with a single volley from two bombard cannons from Hera. Like, what else could you possibly? Wish for right in this position, and uh, that was just the beginning of it, right? We saw so much more in the next few minutes until Jordan eventually called the GG. Going through the achievements, so 
We'll see, uh, better than one to one kill ratio for Jordan. Unfortunately, the amount of units he lost and uh, the cost of those units didn't really favor the German player too much. And Harris economy was stronger, so he was better able to afford the units he went for, the units that he ended up losing himself. And uh, yeah, overall, Hero does come out on top. Well done, 3 0. Let's take a look at the standings to see what it's looking like for these players. There we are. Let's check the results. And Orlu, thank you so much for the raids. Appreciate it. I hope you had a good one. And guys, coming from Orlu's stream, I hope you guys enjoyed his stream so far. Hello, Raiders. Welcome, everyone. We are waiting for game uh, number one of the second series to begin. It's going to take some time. There is usually a 10-minute or so break between series for TTL. However... Uh, we are just taking a look at the standings for for the league so far, right? And I'm especially interested in Group C. So Hera, and we can see him over here. He took on Jordan. Uh, that was the final series that Hera needed to play, right? So this was the fifth series for Hera. This was the fourth series for Jordan. And with a clean... Uh, Series over here, Hera does end up going up to 14 points to secure first place. There is simply no way for anybody to knock him out of first. So it's going to be moving on straight to the round of eight. I'm going.